You know, we say we're made in the image of God. And God is infinite. Well, then we must be infinite. Then that means that we can't be minus anything. Because if we're minus anything, we're not infinite. So we've spent our lifetime with religions telling us, get rid of hate, get rid of fear, get rid of anger. Well, I got news for you, you can't. Because you can't have infinity minus anything. They're all somewhere in your consciousness. But you can do something about it. Because the greatest energy of all is what you hear, hear all the time. It's the energy of love. Love can override those things. There's a purpose for everything at its time, or it wouldn't be created. God created everything, 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 everything. That means every emotion, every feeling. Look, Jesus was plenty angry when he chased the money changers out of the temple, but he used the anger, and he wasn't used by it. The very next moment, he said, forgive them, they know not what they do. So all of these things are in you, and there's an appropriate time for the use of every one of them, including fear. I hope I have some fear if I'm standing on a high bluff, you know, that's a mile above the bottom uh, uh, to step back. So fear's not bad. It's whether you're used by it or whether you use it. That's the whole secret. Dominion is to use everything and don't be used by anything. In other words, if you're worried about your money in the bank, you're being used by your money. If you're worried, if you have a relationship you feel like you can't get without, you're being used by that relationship. Take another look at it. So look at everything you have in life and say, am I being used by this or am I using it? And, and, and this can help free us so that we are what we should be and can be. You know, there's so much contradiction because we thrill when we hear that God is omnipotent and God is omnipresent. Well, if God is omnipotent, then there isn't any other power. So we can't say God is omnipotent except uh, 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 Hussein or some has power or something, or God is omnipresent except here. God is right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Or God is not omnipresent. That means that God is right here. That's the oneness that Rudolf has kept talking about. That's the oneness. And if you can't realize that God is omnipresence, you can't realize oneness. Because oneness and omnipresence are the same word. Well, you know, you go to school and you go through... Uh, the sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, you know, before you graduate from high school. Every grade is necessary. So I'm not putting down anybody. I'm not putting down any religion. I'm not putting down where anyone is because you have to go through all those steps. You, you can take somebody in the tenth grade and let them sit in the sixth grade and they'll know what's going on. But you can't take somebody in the sixth grade and put them in the tenth grade and expect them to know what's going on. So it's a wonderful, wonderful moment when we can get to the point of saying, God is with me. God is in me. That's fine. And you can't take the next step until you get that step. But the next step says, ah, -uh. God isn't with you. God isn't in you. God is as you. As long as it's with you, then there's two things, you and something with you. As long as God is in you, then there's something in something else. It's all one. It's one piece. One. I've been hearing one all morning. That's what it means. You can't have oneness and then withness or something. It's one. It's one fabric. We're like threads that make up one whole fabric. Well, I had, I meditate every New Year's to decide what this new year is going to be about. And the other day it came to me, it said, preach the gospel. Well, the gospel doesn't mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel is the good news. Well, I got news for you. 
The good news is terrifying. The good news doesn't leave you any place to hide. It doesn't give you any excuses. See, that's what we created a lot of religion for, to give us an excuse. We said, oh, Jesus Christ was the only son of man. So I'm just me. He was God. That gives me an excuse not to be like him or to live what he said because he was special. So we look for excuses. And the good news is, oh, if you hear this, you're going to want to slit my throat. There is no power over you in your life that you do not give it that power. You give it the power. If you can say, well, my government, you let your government, you're convinced that. You know, look, Jesus said in his things, your faith hath made you whole. Now, we may need a Jesus to go around to reach out to, but it's our own reaching out. In other words, we create the laws of our life. Quantum physics today says that everything is consciousness manifesting in form. Consciousness, the laws we set up for ourselves, manifesting in form. If you want to change the form, change the consciousness. There is no doubt about it. There is no way otherwise. If you create your laws, and, it, and, and we do it without knowing we're doing it. For instance, we'll say, well, I always, whoops, that means you have created a law for yourself. Or I never, whoop, another law. See, we create it. So if you're not happy with any of your life, then you better look at the laws that you created for yourself and give them power to, the power of loneliness, the power of fear, the power of these things. We do it to ourselves. We have to know that or we cannot know Ah, we cannot know real self-love. Now I'm full circle back to Eve and our apple because the minute we reach out there for the answer, we are, uh, we're in a dualistic world. It's all inside of us. We are the captains of our ship. We create our lives. This is tough stuff, but you know, the time has come now we can do it. Couldn't do it 50 years ago, 60 years ago. But we have to do it now or we're going to destroy this world. And we have to get back to some of the basic things. Now, there's, there's a couple of things about the Christian, the, I don't want to say Christian message because that implies what's called Christian, uh, the message of the Master Jesus. He gave us the solution, not only for our own personal problems, but for the whole world. You see, up until now, all corporations, all governments, all businesses have had the wrong priority. Results have gone before cause. Get the bottom line has come before how you get it. In other words, in God we trust, but send in the CIA and drop bombs. In other words, it makes no sense. And Jesus gave us the priority. He said, ah, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the subjective reality. If you, for instance, if you wanted peace and you sat down, forget all that's going on in the world and say, well, how do I get peace? That's looking at it subjectively. And then it would say, build hospitals, build schools, feed the poor. You do that, you wouldn't have any terrorists. But anybody who says, let's get peace by dropping bombs is an idiot. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So in our own lives, that's just why meditation is important. I get up every morning, I meditate. It's like taking a psychic bath. I drop all of the, the day's stuff, and I get right in there and say, I turn my life over to the subjective nature of life and find out the principles that then I can objectify.